question is from Catherine B. Fit. What is the minimum macro calorie intake you would like to see an individual at before they enter a cutting phase? What would you consider ideal? Oh, this is different from person to person. It's, I mean, we it, can go general, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I picked this question when we were going through them because I think it'll create a good discussion. But the truth is, this is very individual, right? Like the, But there are some general rules. Like, you know, uh, it'd be very common that I would get a female client that was coming to me that is only – you know, 10 to 20 pounds overweight and they come to lose weight. And then when I look at their diet and they, it, because what happens when they hire a trainer, they, or they seek someone like me out. They've already been trying lots of things on their own and they've been frustrated. And now they're coming to me. It's like, okay, I'm finally going to pony up the money to invest in a professional to help me. And the unfortunate part is I've got them after they've already fucking yo-yo diet a bunch of time. They've already been restricting calories and they come to me and they're like, Hey, I'm only eating 1300 calories a day and I can't lose this last 15 to 20 pounds I'm trying to lose, you know, what do I need to do? And that person, I don't, I don't want to cut from there. I, I like to get, I like to get most of my female clients above 2000 calories, uh, at least. And that's, that's a, that's a very gray generic answer, but I feel that that falls in the category of anybody from about 130, 30 pounds all the way up to 200 plus pounds. I want them above 2000 as a female. I want to mm -hmm. get them to where they could eat 2000 calories, not put on body fat. Even if we're just staying the same, we're not losing any weight, but we're strength training. We're able to consume 2000 calories and not put body fat on. Uh, that's where I want you to be before I start to pull you back. At least that before I pull you back to uh, the other direction. I mean, uh, in an, an ideal world, uh, I'll use uh, Melissa Wolf as an example since she was the last like real competitor that I coached and she's only about 120 pounds. I moved her all the way up to 2,700 calories mm -hmm. before I brought her back down. So the truth is the, the higher I can get somebody's caloric intake up, maintenance calorie intake up before we cut, it just gives us lots more room to work with on the way down. And it, and what it, it hopefully ends up happening. And like in her case, getting on stage to compete ripped as shit and only having to cut down to 1800 calories which is a is a very happy place for a lot of people to be at. So you got to keep that in mind that wherever you are currently right now that if you're at a place where you already feel like you're not really eating a ton and you want to start cutting, you know, you're going to land in a place that you're you're going to feel like you're always restricting and you don't want to be there. Yeah, the the individual aspect of this is really how how comfortable are you uh, at the calories that you're going to settle at eventually. So how comfortable would you be maintaining your body weight at 1500 calories or, you know, 1300 calories or 2000 calories? That's an important question to ask yourself because some people are okay. Some people don't have big appetites and they're like, yeah, I'd be, I'd be fine, you know, living off of 1400 calories. So the amount of calories that you're consuming basically will keep you at the same weight. That's what maintenance, uh, calories means. So when you're dropping your calories to lose weight, eventually when you get to your ideal body weight or body fat percentage, now you're consuming your maintenance, but you've had to cut to get there. So what you don't want to do is start at, you know, 1500 calories, get down to a thousand calories. Now you're where you want to be. Right. Now you got to live at a thousand calories all the time. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. And very, very common. This is what happens a lot of times. It is, but, it, but for some people it's okay, but usually not. It usually isn't okay. So I typically, I'm, I'm right along with Adam, I'd say for, for women, I like to get them above 2,000 calories. It's awesome if I can get them at like 2,400 calories. For a man, I'm trying to get them above 2,500 calories, usually around 3,000 calories. I was going to say, happy. for a man, I'm looking for north of three. Yeah, and, and when I get to that point, then I can start to cut uh, the calories and get them to get their bodies to burn body And keep fat. in mind, I know there's some tool that's listening right now that's fucking, oh my God, that's so, that, that's, this is generic advice. Right, right, right. Like, right. no doubt, there. There's many variables. How much that person is moving, how much lean body mass oh, yeah. they have, their training routine. Like, of, I'm talking but, about regular activity. You exercise a few days a week. Right. You, you have a normal desk job. And we're trying to give you an idea, all right? So this person, I mean, we're doing our best to answer this question without knowing all those things. So you, so if you know that you're somebody who's probably in that extreme, it's like, you know, if you're a, a female, it's probably good to be somewhere in north of 2000 before you start cutting, especially if you know that you have, you know, and that's another thing that matters too. Like 
Or are we cutting for to lose five pounds? Or are we cutting to lose 30 to 40 pounds? Yeah, because then you got a long way to go. Right. So the, the, the bigger the number that you need to cut and restrict, the higher you're going to want your calories at currently to before you come back the other direction. Because, you know, it's only going to take a, a few weeks before the body gets adapted to that new uh, caloric maintenance. And so you got to keep that in mind that you may have to restrict multiple times. It's not like... You know, a lot of times people, they have a, a goal and they're like, oh, okay, well, if I restrict calories from, you know, 2,000 to 1,500, uh, I'm going to, and I just be consistent with that, I'm going to lose weight. Well, yeah, you're going to lose weight, but eventually, uh, and this doesn't take but a, a few weeks, maybe a month or two tops, the body then adapts to that. And then, and then where do you go? Yeah. Then where do you go from there? And mm-hmm. if your goal is something beyond 10, 15 pounds, you have to know that that's going to take you a longer amount of time. So yeah. this is uh, you know a hard one to answer and be specific, but give you some general things or things that we think about before we now, decide. Now, the best way to help this is lift weights. Lift right. weights, get stronger, build muscle. That uh, tends to promote a, a hotter, faster metabolism. It also it reduces the metabolic slowdown that can happen when you're reducing calories like Adam's talking about. Lifting weights is one of the best insurance policies you have against those things. And it's also one of the best insurance policies to ensure that you have a fast metabolism, which in today's day and age is a massive advantage.